What's up, everybody? Zach here with Fury Man, and we are back for another episode of Sick of Gear Reviews. Today, we are covering the Hudson Bib. Now, I only have this in the Waterfowl Marsh. I don't have it in the Timber. That's next on the list. Um, but a beautiful piece of equipment here, all right? I just got this today in the mail. Very excited about it, and first impression, very, very tough. A tough piece of equipment, gorgeous piece of look of gorgeous looking piece of equipment, but it it, it feels tough. All right, very lightweight, uh, not a lot that would really encumber you. Okay, you could really, really be flexible in both the literal and uh, the metaphorical use of the term. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Start from the top. Started from the bottom, now we're here. We have our elastic, but it's very thick. I'm noticing that right now it's very thick material. Damn. Damn, boy. Damn, boy, he's thick. Boy, that's a thick ass boy. Damn. Our elastic uh, suspenders, if you want to call it that. Okay, you're, you're over straps, shoulder straps. What's neat about these is they took this from the white tail line, and I'm not sure which came first, the whitetail line idea um, or the waterfowl um, line, where they, it, I think they call it their silent technology or something like that, but where most uh, most waders have Velcro uh, or buckle enclosures. This is literally just a loop. They just folded the fabric back over, okay? Now this is really, it looks like they did a Molly, um, M-O-L-L-E um, setup here because you, you just see it's just got webbing it's hard to see because it is flat, but there's individual slots here. Uh, maybe, maybe a small shell, but that has to be really small. I think they just did that in case you have like a carabiner or something like that you want to throw in there. Some guys always have carabiners on them. Um, I keep mine in my pack, but nonetheless, when it goes on, you've got this very lightweight metal piece here. It looks like a number six. All you're doing is just caveman style, just whoop, and there you go. Now, I thought at first this was going to slip off no matter what. When it goes in, this is actually smaller than the width of this. So you have to push it in and then kind of wedge it up just like that to get it under there. And honestly, it hasn't come off when I've been messing with it. But I'm sure people have their, uh, their issues in the field. And, and if, you, if you have been, then let me know. Moving down. Okay. We got four, po four pockets to pull. We've got the two... Small size zipper enclosures here. Uh, just the back side is lined. The outside is still this Gore-Tex Infinium material. Behind that, no gear would be sick of gear without the hand warmer pockets, okay? Both fully lined, front and back, okay? More of that fleece that we always talk about around the collars of the jackets, that's fully lined in here, okay? Oh, good point. Yeah, no, that was a good point, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, toss your input at any time, man. That's good, good, that's good. Now, uh, the entire length from top, pretty much down to the crotch, you've obviously got your your dual zippers, okay? Now, up here, you've just got the small little uh, grab handle here, that little, little notch, okay? The big grab handle there is right there. I don't know if you can see it, but right there. A little bit bigger, okay? Because... Most of the time, we're going to be taking a leak, and it's the bottom one that's getting used the most. So, awesome that they threw that little feature in there. Moving down to the pant legs. Right side, you got your Sika logo. You have a little bit bigger than the actual uh, outer shell jacket pockets, the shell, shell pockets. So, the actual shell for shells, okay? Had to clear that up. A little bit bigger, okay? These are lined with more of that rugged material that we talk about in most of the pockets on our jackets, okay? It, it lengthens the time you use this kind of material, okay? Really, really good stuff, all right? Moving down to the pant leg, on both sides, you've got a medium-sized zipper, black, uh, both models that goes the length of the pant leg pretty much all the way up give or take a you know 
a few inches all the way up to uh, uh, the stretch technology that we see on the Hudson jacket, all the way up, okay. Again, they threw in the larger pull tab at the top. Just another added bonus that Sika decided to put in there, okay. They have another one down there at the bottom as well, because like I said, guys, most of the time when we're putting these on, it's gonna be freezing out. So we're gonna keep our gloves on. Those of us who don't wear gloves, well, you got a bigger tab to pull. Like I said, it goes all the way up though. Now, what's neat about these, and I love these. We have these in the military, and I love them. Integrated knee pads. They can be removed, and we'll get to that when we hit the inside. But really, really nice. Not so heavy that they're clinking everywhere when you go on to take a knee. Very lightweight and flexible, all right? Come around to the side, we have that, that stretch material that we talked about. If you come from the Hudson Jacket review, you'll know that this is waterproof, very waterproof. As much as it seems like it is not, it is, okay? Around on the back side, we got that reinforced booty. In, uh -huh. big booty. Right there, more of that, tech, that rugged fabric that goes into the pockets that we just talked about on each pant leg front. Going down the back side, nothing really crazy. You just have the Sika logo down the left pant leg and close to the bottom. So going into the inside, you got your classic 10 mile tag. Now along the, along the back side here, you kind of have some, almost like a belt. I'm not going to call it that, but it, it, it's, it's pretty dang close to it. If you guys can see now, this would be the back side. Okay. So there's the tag. This is the back side. A little bit more reinforcement here. Why? If you guys can see where my fingers are at, there's two Optifade tabs right there, okay? Velcro enclosures, okay? So the rest of this is pretty much just a slightly insulated, it's kind of fuzzy. Um, the entire length of the actual bibs is just that uh, uh, Gore-Tex Infinium, but just the inside. It's a little fuzzy, a little insulated, not much. Most of it's just around the pockets. It's not until we get down to the base of the zipper that we start to see that Dakota fleece, okay? We see it on a lot of jackets, and you can see it right here. This goes down pretty much to the bottom of the, the butt where it's reinforced, all right? So right here is where it stops, okay? You can pretty much follow it with the change in color. And that's awesome, because nine times out of 10, you're gonna be in a layout blind, or you're gonna be sitting on something cold. Perfect, all right? Shit that, man, it's a good, it's a good review so far. Now, lastly, let's just hop on the inside here and show you guys how to take out and put back in the knee pads. Inside, you've got this little uh, uh, change of color here, this, this desert tan material. Nothing crazy about that. You have a Velcro, Velcro enclosure, and all you got to do is just pull them out, and you're good to go. If you want to put them back in, just do the opposite. So guys, very straightforward. I'm, I'm really pumped to take these out and beat the crap out of them. Whether it's running the pup, especially next year during hunting season, but these are gonna earn their pay and I can already tell that it's either gonna go really fast or they're gonna last. I'm gonna give it a rating, an initial rating, just because I don't know, a four out of five. And that's because I just haven't field tested them yet. Four out of five for the Hudson Bibs. Fine. So guys, thank you very much for watching. We hope to see you on the next episode. My co-host here was awesome. I mean, clearly very involved in the video. Did awesome, good boy. <laughs> so guys, thank you very much for watching again. And we'll see you on the next one. We are out. Try to catch me howling at the moon.